Should people worry about high SHBG levels in males? Gil. Well, that's a good question. In and of itself, it isn't necessarily detrimental. When you say high, right, that doesn't define specific metrics. That is just kind of saying, well, it's above normal. But what is normal? So women tend to show higher SHBG levels than men. People in certain cultures who follow certain nutritional regimens tend to show higher SHBG levels than most Americans. And we know that insulin has a direct antagonistic effect on SHBG levels, and that's evident in type 2 diabetics or people with insulin resistance. So elevated SHBG far above the physiological ranges of norm or even within the range of norm on the most labs when it tends to shoot towards the higher end of the peak is usually indicative of either a lifestyle or a liver issue. So while in and of itself it isn't necessarily detrimental outside of the uh, obvious, which is binding up more testosterone and therefore lowering free T, it can be indicative of a more serious underlying issue. So it's very important that people assess that issue and don't just go and try to crush your SHBG, but use it as an opportunity to figure out what's causing it in the first place. Now, if this is a ketogenic lifestyle or a diet that is lower in carbohydrates or a suppression of insulin that is intentional and controlled, this may be one underlying factor. If it is something that has to do with a liver issue, specifically non-alcoholic fatty liver or fatty liver disease caused by alcohol or caused by over-the-counter pain medication or specific prescription medications, it is something to address. We have seen elevated SHBG levels in hepatitis patients with elevated bilirubin as well. So don't just ignore it for what it is and say, well, you know, I heard that high SHBG is not an issue per se. Yes, not necessarily, but it could be an underlying metric to utilize and diagnose a bigger issue uh, in, in your body. So pay attention to it and find out why it's happening, and then you can address it accordingly. And if men could not find a cause uh, for it, should they then try to lower it, taking supplements? Well, that comes down to a number of factors. First and foremost, you need to ask yourself, why do I want my SHBG lower? If it's for the purpose of freeing up more testosterone, you know, we have opportunities to engage that with uh, changing our therapy protocol, assuming that the, the, the man is on TRT. If he's not on TRT and it's elevated, sure, you can try some things that are going to adapt your SHBG to a more sustainable level. And it could be just a tweak in nutrition, which is probably going to make a bigger dent than over-the-counter supplements would. If you're not on treatment and you're going to start using medication to lower it, understand that a lot of the DHT-derived uh, medications that are essentially going to have the biggest impact on SHBG are also anywhere from mildly to grossly suppressive on your HPTA. So you may actually lower your total testosterone production while trying to chase free testosterone at the same time. Uh, so it's not always a clear-cut answer. You have to approach this a little more individualistic and kind of assess what the specific situation is before you can uh, plan an attack on it. And what could men tweak to their TRT protocol if they're on TRT with a high SHBG? If you're on TRT already and your SHBG is still high, again, you first and foremost want to go and rule out any potential liver issues. Once that's been done, the next thing you can do is try to make changes to your protocol. Sometimes all it takes is a change of frequency or a change in dosing in order to optimize your free testosterone. And lastly, if it still lingers, which could be a genetic predisposition, there are specific medications that could be complemented. Uh, generally, they're going to be DHC derivatives. If you're overseas, uh, outside of the United States, Proviron is one medication that's often prescribed specifically because of its binding affinity to SHBG, which allows other androgens to do their job more effectively. And then if you're in the U.S., there are other things you can try. Um, I believe Danazole is one that is rarely used, but it's, uh, and you have to double check on that because I don't have a whole lot of experience with that medication, but I have seen it used uh, in the past in other uh, 
uh, applications, and then naturally any of the D8 derivatives, which on degree of hepatotoxicity, um, the provirin is one of the few that is not um, liver toxic, and that is one that could be used at a moderate dose uh, for longer periods of time. Unfortunately, the FDA has not approved it for use in the U.S., and therefore uh, I have seen this on low dose exandrolone get good results on uh, stabilizing their their DHT increase, their SHBG decrease, and therefore freeing up more testosterone. But again, you have to be careful. It is dose dependent. It will do a number on your lipids. It will elevate liver enzymes transiently, and it will also uh, cause SHB to come down hard. So uh, something you got to monitor for. But like I said, first step, rule out any potential issues, uh, you know, with, uh, with regards to health, followed by nutritional changes. And then lastly, I would just go into the adjustment of protocol before I add in any ancillaries. Okay, thanks. Hey, thank you for watching. And if you want to learn a ton more about hormone optimization, do this next. Click on one of these thumbnails and I'll see you there.